Hey there guys, we're going to be going back to Beowulf and we're going to be doing another rank 1 clear. So we're going to go ahead and turn on all the modifiers and this time we're not going to be using a bunch of the units I used in my previous clears. We're not going to use Rain, Dwayne, Melissa, Abigail, etc. We're going to leave all of them on the bench, not using Ibarra. We're going to go back to some older units like the Near people. Chow's going to get off the bench. We're going to take Olive. And then, of course, Nora is going to come as well. So, as I've mentioned, Nora does make this Clash of Wills a whole lot more manageable. So, let's get in here and do a clear. I'll show you the gear at the end. Turn chart will be in the comments. And let's knock it out. So, overall, with Nora on the party, um, a lot of the problems of the boss are pretty much handled. For example, you know, the field, all that kind of stuff. So, on turn one, Olive will just do... <coughs> Uh, five of her skills for morale gain and for breaking the boss. Nora on turn one will quad, will do esoteric lightning, both the killers and living for two. Um, Chow will do regular cover, I'm sorry, regular cover, don't do omni cover. His regular cover is all you really need and it's much better mitigation. Chow's omni cover is low cover mitigation and it'll probably get him killed. Although turn one it would be okay, but we're gonna use we're, we're never gonna use Chow's Omni cover. So we're going to normal cover, we're going to true guardian, and we're going to focused inspiration. Sylvie will do 85 mitigation for turn one, then we're gonna do vines, and we're gonna do defense. Uh, now two or A2 is gonna just triple offensive heal combo for the morale game. And 2B in the shift form will do charge volt to lightning imbue and then double machine killer. Uh, now we're going to do a little bit of damage right now. We're not really worried too much about damage yet. We're just doing setup, morale gain, etc. Now I do have to tell you, morale gain in this clear is extremely bad. We have really bad morale generation, but we're, we're, we're going to be okay. We've got Chow for some counters, not a ton, but there you go. And as you, <coughs> as you saw, Chow's um, damage he took was pretty fine uh, on turn one. It's going to be a lot worse later. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and just you know uh, multicast some of Chow's morale skills, like most loyal and true guardian. Sylvie will go to the shift form here. We're going to do Paladin's offense. We're going to do cheerful for the morale gain, and we're going to do. Let's actually do it this way. Let's do the Thunder Magnus, then Cheerful, and then Offense. We're going to have Olive just reload and again keep focusing or keep morale filling. Nora <coughs> will do the Field. Whoops. The Field, the Accuracy buff, which is a big reason that she makes the fight easier. Burst, and then we're going to just hit the boss with um, Enigmatic. And then we're going to do the shifted LB of 2B, and we're going to triple offensive heal combo. Alright, there we go. Um, yeah, so, you know, with Nora on the party, we can kind of DPS any turn we please and not really worry about it. Whereas the other clear without Nora, and using dual wielders, we could only DPS on turns like 5 and 8. Um, yeah, but with either a full double hand party, which is another option, or using Nora, you can just deal damage any turn you want, the accuracy is not really a problem. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> now we are going to, once again, just reload Chow and fill the morale gauge. Turn two and three is only physical damage, so we can kind of ignore, ignore that. We're going to use Olive's SLB this turn. We're going to use Nora's LB this turn. We're going to deal some damage to push the threshold a little bit closer. We're going to go to the base form with 2B and triple R40. We'll use the SLB of A2 for modifier buff. We're going to let her go first because, you know, we, we, we know the whole problems with A2's LB. Uh, Sylvie, though, is going to poach Demon on Nora. Then we're going to double Cheerful. Okay. <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and deal some damage here. You know, as much damage as we can. It doesn't really matter, honestly speaking, what turn we push the threshold. Um, so we're just slowly, slowly working our way there. Because yeah, we can we can deal damage any turn we want. It doesn't really matter um, with the boss's morale and all that. So turn four is going to be a relatively painful turn for Chow. So we're going to guard Chow to survive this turn a lot better. 
We're going to use Sylvie's Shifted LB this turn for modifier, buff, stats, etc. And now we're going to do some damage. So the boss does have defense, defense buffs here. So we're going to just normal attack Olive to perfect dispel that away. There we go. Now Nora is going to quad. We're going to do the field to replace the field and then triple Enigmatic. We're going to use the base form LB of 2B and then Hateful Blade of A2. So we're going to click Nora first to make sure that field is gone. Then we're going to weave in her bolting to the extreme Novas of the other two. So click Nora first, make sure the field is gone. Then we extreme Nova and deal some damage. If we push the threshold, great. If we don't, that's okay too. Does it, it, like I said, it doesn't really matter what turn the threshold gets pushed. We'll just continue to deal steady damage as we go. And there's Chow taking a beating. Like I told you, turn four does hurt. You know, if you're having Abigail, she laughs it off. If you're using Chow, eh, it's painful. You better guard. <laughs> okay, turn five. We are going to... Um, you now, you can either use Chow's... Eh, yeah, we're going to use Chow's... LB here for more counter and morale gain. This is an AoE physical turn, so we'll use this to get more counters. Um, you don't have to, though. You could just regular cover. It doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, so Sylvie on this turn will do Bolt Egg to imbue the party. We're going to Demon Killer on 2B, and we're going to Cheerful, because like I said, the morale gauge and this clear is really freaking bad. You notice how bad our morale is, but it's fine. We're working on it. All right, so turn five, we're gonna go ahead and just have Olive go back to just basically filling the morale gauge and breaking because this boss is annoying. Nora's finally gonna use her SLB for the modifier buff, so our damage will go up a little more now. So we're gonna go ahead and shift our 2B and triple the machine killer bolting, and then A2 will triple offensive heal. Now I know offensive heal is lower damage than the other one, but um, it does fill morale gauge. Her uh, other one does not. We didn't push the threshold. Doesn't really matter. It's fine. Who cares? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, so next is going to be turn six. All right. So turn six, we're going to do be doing a bunch of rebuffing. Come on, Chow. Okay. So turn six, Chow is going to normal cover, true guardian and Focused Inspiration. We're going to have A2 do the SLB. We're gonna to try to push the threshold if we can. If we do, great, if not, whatever. Um, let's see here, what else are we doing? We're gonna have 2B do her shift at LB. Before we do all this, Nora is going to Esoteric, Conqueror, Conqueror, and um, Living for two. Uh, let's see, we're going to have Olive just fill the morale gauge because the morale gauge is so bad. Um, we're going to have Sylvie do Thunder Amplify. We're going to do Defense and we're going to do Cheerful. Okay, and we'll try our best to sort of kind of jank chain these. At this point, we do want to push that threshold if we can. And we finally did. There we go. Okay. And I do realize one of those chains was bolting and one of those chains was extreme and over. They're not going to chain anyway, but, um, you know, chain the best you can. But we finally got the threshold pushed, so we're good. Okay. <clears throat> and if we still didn't push it at that um, until then, it still would have been fine. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter because turn, as long, as long as it's pushed by turn eight, you're fine. So this turn, we could have pushed it as well. So turn seven, another super painful turn. So we're going to guard Chow. We're also going to go up here to the gauge and... <clears throat> Defense and Spirit buff on turn 7. Uh, the boss does have attack and magic buff, so we're going to use Sylvie in the shift form to not so fast to get rid of it. Then we're going to Demon Killer on Nora, and we're going to Cheerful to again try to fill that morale gauge. Um, we're going to use Olive this turn to times 4, and then we're going to Magnus to get ready for the big bursting next turn. Now the boss does have a field this turn, so we're going to use Nora to accuracy buff, remove the field, we're going to burst, and then we're going to 150 amplify for the big damage next turn. 2B can go to the base form, and we can... Now, okay, so we want to push the boss on this turn <coughs> as close to 50 as we can without going... Um, as close to 50 as we can 
without going uh, down all the way to 50. So we're gonna 2B. So we're not gonna we're gonna chain these like a little bit, but not really. So we're gonna go ahead and double heal combo as well as Yorha. So we'll chain this. And again, I'm not trying to super chain. I want to push her close to 50, but not go too far. That's fine. That's great. Okay. Finally, just on time, turn seven or turn eight, we now have the Morale Chow is probably gonna die here. There he goes. He re-raises, whatever. He kept the team alive, that's all we really care about. And then the next few turns are gonna be no problem at all. Okay, so now we're probably gonna kill the boss if we do. Great. If not, we just keep going, it's fine. Um, anyway, so the boss is fully broken, has no debuffs, etc. Uh, where morale is full, so let's go. So we're going to SLB Olive, we're going to power it up LB Nora, we're going to base LB 2B, we're going to Hateful Blade again. Sylvie will start off with you and her LB for the modifier buffs, and Chow, nothing yet. So let's go ahead and see if we um, finish off the boss. We should, and if we don't, it's okay, we keep going, because turn turn 8 is a pretty, pretty safe turn. We killed the boss that turn. If we hadn't killed the boss, we used Chow to reapply cover. We already had Mirage, etc. 3.4 damage, damage cap handled. Um, and this team can go as high as like 3.7, 3.8 on that turn, etc. That, that was a low variant roll, but whatever. It was fine. It handled. Um, and yeah, so if you don't kill the boss on turn, you'll definitely damage cap on turn 8. If you don't kill the boss on turn 8, just keep going. On turn 9, the boss does some weak AoE magic and one AoE physical. So have Chow just reapply his cover mitigations, etc. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Let me write this in the turn chart. And I can show you the damage breakdown while I'm typing this real quick so I don't forget. There we go. Um, anyway, so here's the damage breakdown. So 2B is really good here with the modifier buffs from Nora because Nora gives those big modifier buffs to morale LBs and 2B gets to double dip on that. So it's really, really nice. Um, Nora herself, you know, pretty good. She's only, only EX2 for me. Um, you know, at EX3, she'd be doing better, but she's overall fine. Uh, not the greatest damage dealer in Clash of Wills, just to be completely honest here. Um, Olive, honestly, mostly the, just the breaker and a support chainer. Um, did some damage, and then A2 is here as, like, you know, backup damage. She feels morale, though. <clears throat> so there we go. There was, uh, my god, I am getting green tickets like every other clear, which is really cool. Anyway, um, I'll show you the team's gear. So there it is, you know. If you've got Nora, this fight is very manageable. So Chow is um, full evasion with some counter gear, uh, bulk otherwise. You know, he, he does get Nora's leader skill, which is convenient. A lot of evasion. And um, honestly, if you don't want to gear for evasion, you don't have to. That means just, just as long as you never omni cover, you don't actually need evasion because we're miraging everything, but yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, there you go. Sylvie is our passive provoker, and you know, she does need full evasion because she's passive provoking the single target. The, bo <coughs> the boss has no accuracy. I gave her some blizzard orbs for, um, for you know, uh, countering. Uh, we did give her a morale card, so we're dual wielding for that. Other than that, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, A2, whoops, whoops. A2 is using a fist build because we are going for, um, we have a 40% fist in peril from Nora. So, you know, that's a big damage gain right there. Uh, so there it is. She is maxed on everything. So maxed beast, demon, and machine. Uh, Olive, just support for the most part, but she did, she did damage too. Um, 11.7 magic. We, all, we only have uh, a 300 leader skill right now. Anyway, she's maxed on everything. So there it is. There you go. <clears throat> and maxed LB, maxed beast, demon, and machine. Uh, range card is better, but I decided to not use range card because, you know, this is a no rain clear. So there we go. Um, Nora, here's the build we're using. 13.8 maxed on everything. And then her own banner card. Uh, we gave her the overcap killer, and I saw some comments in the previous video, like, thinking the, the clear won't work if you don't have Ifrit's overcap killers. If you don't have that, like, the damage will go down a tiny, tiny amount, but it's really not that big a deal. Especially on a triple race boss, so don't sweat that. Um, anyway, there it is, maxed on everything, and there we go. And then 2B is, again, maxed on everything. She did the big carry here. Honestly, I probably should have given her 
the Clash helmet and the Clash um, ring, but whatever. Whatever. It worked. And there we go. And she is maxed on everything. Okay. So there is your no, you know, Rain, Dwayne, Melissa, Abigail clear. Hope it helps. See you in a bit.